Howdy folks. Hello Hardcase. As you can see this is a response to a video by a user named Hardcase Owns You and this is actually not a response to the video itself but to a discussion um, that's taking place in the comments section. In part at least about um, the idea of gravity being a theory and I talked a little bit about gravity and Newton and Einstein and that whole story and I originally made a video response expanding on that and that's a very interesting story it's a lot of fun to talk about but that video was 28 minutes long so I'm remaking it and this time I'm just going to focus on the one point that I think is crucial to the discussion and will be the most helpful so what I'm going to talk about is what science is what math is the difference between science and math and the point of all this why it makes no sense to talk about proving a theory. So if you feel like you have a really solid grasp on all those things, or if you're just not interested, you should probably leave now because there's really nothing else in this video for you. So first of all, science. What science is. Um, now some of this might seem obvious, some of what I'm going to say might seem obvious, and some of it might seem obvious once you've thought about it, but it might be new to you. I'm not I don't really know <laughs> what most people think about these things. I'm very interested in them, obviously. Science. What science does is it looks at the world. And in the world, we can observe things and we can measure things. And what science does is it looks at all these observations, all this data, and it tries to generalize. It says, what do all these things have in common? Are there any laws or theories or principles? And you can call these whatever you want. I don't really want to get into... The, the semantics of all that, but are there any sorts of general rules that we can come up with that might describe or explain these events that we see, these observations that we make? When you have a theory, you can add on evidence and add on evidence and add on evidence, but there's never a point at which you say, okay, case closed, we have enough evidence for this theory, it must be true, there's just so much evidence for it, it absolutely has to be true. You don't ever say that. It's always a theory for a couple of reasons. One reason is that, and these reasons are kind of related, one reason is that no matter how many experiments you do or how many data points you take um, that all support your theory, there's never a guarantee that the next experiment you do won't contradict the whole thing. You can never guarantee that. All the experiments in the past will never guarantee that next data point, that next experiment, the next thing you measure. So you can never say that it's always going to be true. Um, the other reason, or another reason, is that you can't make measurements of arbitrary precision. If your theory of gravity predicts that this ball will roll down this ramp in four seconds, and you measure it, and it takes four seconds, um, sure, that agrees with your, with your theory to the limits of your measuring tools. If it just so happened that with a better clock, you could tell that that ball actually took 4.00057 seconds to roll down the ramp, and your theory predicts exactly 4, then it actually doesn't agree with your theory. And these two reasons are related. They're both based on the idea that we don't know everything about the universe. We can't. Our knowledge is not absolute. There are always experiments that we haven't done yet. There are always measurements that we haven't made. Um, in fact, most of the experiments are ones we haven't done yet. Um, we only know a very little bit about the world, so we can never say that we've proven anything because we don't, we don't know everything. So that's science. We look at the world and we build up these principles based on the world, and then we test them against the world. Math is fundamentally different from science in that it comes at knowledge from a different direction. Whereas science starts with events in the real world and works backwards to infer some of the principles that might underlie those things. Math actually starts with the principles and math doesn't care about the real world. Math just has these principles and since we're talking about, we'll be talking about geometry in a minute, um, in geometry these principles are called axioms or postulates. So you start with the axioms and from there you use logic to prove theorems. You say if this axiom is true then this axiom is true, well then this theorem must be true, and this theorem must be true, and then these theorems must be true, and you build up all of mathematics from that starting point up there. Now the obvious question, or, well okay, there are probably a few obvious questions, but the obvious question that I'm going to answer in this video is, where do the axioms come from? Because in science, we derived our principles from 
maybe derived is not the best word, but we hypothesized our principles from things we saw in the real world, but math doesn't take the real world into account. So where do we get the axioms from? Do we just make them up? We actually do. We just make them up. Um, and it sounds facetious, maybe, but it's true. Um, you can just make up an axiom. If you are Euclid in ancient Greece, you might say, I declare that between any two distinct points there is exactly one line. And that's an axiom. That's one of Euclid's axioms of geometry. Um, he had five, actually, five axioms, five postulates, and from those postulates, all of geometry, or all of Euclidean geometry, plane geometry, uh, the same geometry that you studied in high school, all of the theorems of geometry come from those five axioms. Are the axioms true? We don't know. And math doesn't care whether the axioms are true. If you change the axioms, you'll actually get an entirely different system of mathematics. The fifth postulate that Euclid came up with, it's called the parallel postulate, you can look it up. Um, for that one, it's not so obvious that we should pick that as a postulate. And so people have tried to, to mess with it a little bit over the years. Um, if you leave it as, it as it is, you just get ordinary flat geometry. If you change it one way, you get spherical geometry. Um, and if you change it another way, you get hyperbolic geometry. Each of those geometries has a different set of theorems. In flat geometry, the angles of a triangle sum to 180 degrees. In spherical geometry, the angles of a triangle always sum to more than 180 degrees. And in hyperbolic geometry, the angles of a triangle always sum to less than 180 degrees. So, which of those actually describes the world that we live in? We don't know. Mathematics gives us the idea of a proof. When you prove something in math, that's solid. As long as your proof doesn't contain any logical flaws, if you prove something, that's it. Case closed. No one can ever come along and disprove it later. Because in math, unlike in science, you do know everything. Because you've invented it. Or maybe not you personally, but you, the people who are working on that, that math, people who have created that math, um, you know everything about your little mathematical universe because you came up with the axioms that define it. So, unlike in science, where we're just given this world and we're not God, we don't know everything that there is to know about it, in math, you do actually know everything there is to know about it, so you can prove things, definitely. So that's the fundamental difference between math and science, in my opinion, at least. Science starts with things we can observe about the world, experiments we can do, and it takes that data and generalizes it and tries to come up with principles and laws and theories that describe how the world works, and it gathers evidence and tests those theories over and over again. Math starts from basic principles that have nothing to do with the real world, and says, okay, if these basic principles are true, what else can we prove to be true? So things in math, you prove them absolutely, because you know everything about the world that you have defined, whether or not it has anything to do with the real world. You don't care. The example you gave of a theory that has been proven is actually a really great example to illustrate this, so I'd like to use it. Um, your example was the statement that if a triangle has three equal angles, then it also has three equal sides. And you said, well, this is a theory that's been proven, so theories can be proven. Um, so let's look at this in two different ways. If this were a statement of science, what you would do is you would say, well, okay, I have this theory. I have this theory that any triangle with three equal angles will also have three equal sides. So you go out and you find some triangles, and you find one, and it has three equal angles and three equal sides. You say, great, that's evidence for my theory. You find another one, same thing. Great, evidence for your theory. You measure 100 more triangles. All the ones with three equal angles also have three equal sides. So this is a lot of evidence for your theory. Your theory looks really solid. If you measured a thousand, a million, billion triangles, and they all turned out that way, they all turned out to support your theory, that would be great. But would you have proven your theory? No, absolutely not. Because no matter how many triangles you measure, there's no guarantee that the next triangle you measure 
won't have three equal angles but not equal sides. You don't know that because you haven't measured that triangle yet and you don't know everything about the world. And also, you know, maybe you haven't measured those triangles precisely enough. Maybe the, maybe the sides are really, really, really close to equal, but they're not equal. So if that's your theory about the real world, you can't ever know for sure, because there's some things you just can't know. You can't prove it. Now let's look at that statement as a statement of math. It's a theorem of geometry, like you said, and in Euclidean geometry at least, this is a theorem that has been proven. You can start with those five axioms, and work your way down, and you will get to this theorem. And you prove it and that's it. You don't have to gather evidence, you don't have to, um, you know, do experiments on this. You've proven it absolutely. Does it say anything about the real world? Sure doesn't. <laughs> Proving it in geometry doesn't tell you anything about real world triangles. I hope that illustration made sense. I thought it was a, a really good example of the different different ways that, that science and math go about things. So, we've come to the point that I've been making all along, which is that a theory is an idea from science. You gather evidence from the real world to support your theory. While the idea of proving something comes from mathematics, you prove theorems based on um, axioms or basic principles that you've made up. But you can't prove a theory. It just doesn't make any sense to talk about that sort of thing. So I've had a lot of fun making this video. And um, thank you all for watching if you've made it this far. And thank you to Hardcase for being a rational person. <laughs> and uh, willing to listen and willing to discuss things in a sane manner. Which you don't really see often on YouTube. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear any questions or comments you guys have, or if I've made any errors or any omissions in this video. I'd love to hear about those. And that's pretty much it. So have a good day. Bye, kids.